welcome back to my wonderfully new podcast called Instagram Christianity. I'm your host, Ray Johnson, and I'm here with the astounding, wonderful Jason Statham, who has his own podcast called Foul Ball, and he works for the Red Sox. So he's a Yankee and a traitor to the South, but he decided to come to school with me anyway. <laughs> yeah. So. Delightful. <laughs> So, he and I have been really close for a long time. I affectionately call him Facebook Dad because he always gives the sweetest updates to his day on Snapchat and has the same fun, outgoing pose every time. <laughs> so, if you call him Facebook Dad instead of Jason, that's why. <laughs> so, without further ado, I'm just going to go right into it and ask yeah. you uh, same thing I asked Peter. If you've ever felt kind of outcasted and, you know, outside of the clicky groups of the church, as it can be sometimes, because I know you have a Catholic background with your school. So I'm just curious if you found any of that clickiness in your own experience. Yeah, um, it was definitely very evident, right? And so, like, kind of to the point you just said, like, in high school, it's my first time, like, not being in a public school going to, like, a faith-based, you know, like, uh, school and getting that educational viewpoint of it, because, you know, every year, like, we had to take, like, religion courses, and, you know, we were required to go to church, and, you know, it's kind of funny, especially, I think, like, being in an old guy school at a Catholic school, mm. uh, I think, like, a lot of times, like, we just didn't want to be there. So I think that, that was that kind of generic, like, okay, we just, we're just here just because we have to be. Um, because our parents have the money and, you know, we have no other option. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, we're just kind of forced to, you know, to be in church. We're paying a lot of money to be in church. Um, so I think there was definitely that early on. Um, but what makes, like, faith so unique is that I think we all see it very differently. We all kind of go through it. Uh, it's kind of the, to the beat of our own drum. <laughs> and so I think towards like kind of a, the junior year, the senior year, where like, we did have like these groups get to be a part of, or you go on these like kind of, um, what do you call it, like retreat, so to speak, uh, where it, you know, it definitely kind of gave that uh, viewpoint where, yeah, I think within those settings, you could definitely kind of tell people like that there were certain cliques or certain, like, aspects that, you know, it was difficult to kind of process, but I think eventually within my experiences at the end of the day, like, our faith just kind of allowed us to kind of take those and set those aside and then kind of view everything and everybody kind of in a similar experience. So, although it may have been a little unique or a little challenging at first, you know, it's definitely helped, like, faith definitely has a way of kind of setting itself into the midst and goodness gracious i mean i knew you'd have some good insight but golly geez batman <laughs> i knew inviting you would be a good option <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna preach the masses right here <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> coming into a church near you pastor state them <laughs> right exactly <laughs> <laughs> the man of many hats. So. <laughs> I'm also curious, uh, I discussed this with Peter as well, but since um, he's more in the NASCAR realm of things with his experience and your sporting experience with baseball and the like is a different vantage point, I'm curious of how in media, especially because, you know, there's coming of age baseball Christian movies, but... There's also the ones that make out Christianity to be where, you know, on Criminal Minds, we're also a murderer that has a religious knack to how we kill. And it just made out to be very crazy and um, extreme. I'm curious of your take on how you've interpreted that growing up, of being like, well, not all of us are a stereotype, but yet Hollywood acts like we are. Uh, yeah, um, in terms of like... The sporting side of things, too, and kind of to bring that into, like, kind of that kind of faith conversation all that, too. I think 
the best kind of movie that helps kind of explain it a little bit better is uh, Field of Dreams. I was Kevin Costner. I literally thought of that as I was saying the baseball analogy. <laughs> it, yeah. Um, Cause like I said, it's like definitely a crazy world where you know Hollywood, you know, can definitely portray things in such a crazy, like, insane way. Uh, and you know, in a handful of cases, right? There's some cases where it may not be that way, but um, but yeah, I think that's just kind of the generic umbrella. Um, whereas I think they did a really good job with the movie Field of Dreams of really kind of portraying like. Just the simplicity of it all, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because I know that, especially with baseball, there's there's a lot that goes into, you know, putting the product on the field and getting, you know, people in seats, you know. I won't get too into that because I know that can be just too, way too time-consuming and for a lot of folks, very boring. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, I love the Field of Dreams because it just shows what baseball is meant to be. You know, just a simple, you know, part of it where, you know, somebody's just hits the ball, right, somebody just feels the ball, and then I love towards the end of the movie where, you know, Kevin Costner's, you know, playing catch with his Hollywood dad, and, uh, and his dad literally asks him, like, hey, look, is this heaven, and that's when, you know, Kevin Costner says this famous line, no, this is Iowa, you know, as they're standing on a baseball time in the middle of a cornfield, but, um, but yeah, no, it's definitely always nice to kind of see, you know, in a world full of, you know, just crazy things, how we can still get, well, just a little bit of simplicity, um, but yeah, no, it's definitely true, and I know, like, in Hollywood, you definitely get very different perspectives, and I know, like, even with our sports networks, right, like, there's just so many different sports takes and all that stuff, where you get, you know, one extreme sports take, and then you get the exact opposite take, and especially just here in New England, like, with all of our broadcasts, like, you just have, we just have so much information that's just constantly portrayed, and it's just like, my brain's just like, oh my goodness, like, how do I take up the care of it all, like, I just don't know, understand how, like. I totally get that. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there is, especially with how into sports it is up there, for sure. Uh. <laughs> A lot of pride, yeah. and I imagine. Yeah, and that's what's so unique about not only just, like, Boston, but I know, like, just the New England area in general. Like, I think we all have such, like, a high expectation for our sports teams where, you know, if those expectations aren't met, which in the last, I'd say maybe four or five years, a lot of those expectations have not been met. Um, so I know, especially now, there's such a major uproar. Mm. <laughs> I'm chasing something that I might not ever know about until, you know, until I die or whatever. <laughs> but, like, but like it's just so meaningful and impactful. Just everything that I do, there's so many awesome moments where it's like, okay, I know there's really something out there. You know, it just has to be true. Um, whether, you know, whether I win the championship or not, you know, as much as I love to go around the world with my world because I do get a world series ring if they win hey um, <laughs> let's cross our fingers and hope right <laughs> yeah so as much as I would love to go around with the world series ring on saying hey I'm a world champion like I'm a world champion little do they know I'm, I'm just an usher like <laughs> they don't have to know that I can edit this out <laughs> yeah I could just be some washed up player that just never even play in like uh, like, there's I'm, no I'm, shame in a bench one more if you're on the winning team, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take the bait any day. Like, come <laughs> on, let's go win. Like. <laughs> it is a good point, though, because um, since Peter, like myself, is more on the interview side of things, and you're more directly tied to your sport, I think it is a good point with how influential both of the worlds of sports and spirituality can be intertwined, because it's much more praised now when... A guy like Brady in football, like, praises God and, you know, says that all his victories are for him kind of thing. And it's just interesting because, you know, since we're America and we claim to be a godly nation, you know, when things like that happen, it's saluted and whatnot and praised. Or, so people that are indifferent just don't care. But 
You know, when it comes out that same person messes up or trips up, it's like, oh, you're not that Christian. And then you're thinking, well, even though they have this celebrity status with how accomplished they are, just because they're a Christian doesn't mean they don't have any shortcomings. Like, we oh, believe right. in Jesus because we know we're not perfect doesn't mean we're going to be him. And Lord knows I'm not. So it's yeah, just really but... interesting. And I bring that up to the aspect of, in media in general, whether it's sports uh, representations or outside of that, I'm curious, like things on social media, Instagram, whatever, um, what you consider, like people obviously proclaim, proclaiming Christ for clout, um, if you've noticed any stark controversies with noticing that and thinking, you know, I'm doing my best to do my part, but then I see someone getting more followers than me, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> And then it's like, but I'm not fake, and they are. And they're getting more attention, and they're misleading people. So I'm curious about your takes on that. I think more so, especially with the media, you know, like, I think we're all held to such a high standard. You know, a lot of people look up to, like, even even the ushers. Like, a lot of people, like, look up to us, you know, even though technically in the grand scheme of things, we're pretty much the bottom of the barrel. Um, we're... You know, looked up to and were respected, and then obviously when it comes to the players, kind of to your point, right? Players obviously are on, are on a whole new level, and you know I've had the fortune of talking to a couple players, you know, so so far with the Red Sox. Um, it's been more so folks on the away teams, um, but it's nice to see that like a lot of these players, like with as much talent as they have, with a, as much money as they have. Um, and of course, with the media side of things too, but as many followers as they have, whatever. Like, I mean, all these guys are just there to play the game, <laughs> which is awesome to see. Like, like that's all they want to do, and then they'll go home and then like have a beer or whatever, and just like see their families and their kids and their parents and all that stuff. Um, and so that's really, I think, kind of uplifting. But of course, you know, like you said, stuff happens where, you know, like I, I mess up way too many times to count like you know especially especially like on the job like there's points where you know my brain's just going a million miles a second you know I'm just thinking of every little thing and then you know I always tell myself prepare for the worst and hope for the best so especially in times when like so many things are going wrong like someone will come up to me and ask me a question and I'll just get it wrong completely and then they just go on and on about oh I can't believe you messed up mm, yeah you know, and and then it's kind of the same way in the player sense too. Where like, you know, they'll do something, they'll mess up. Like we're, we're people, we're human. Like, you know, we can't do every single little thing right. It's just not, it's just not possible, unfortunately. Yeah, and it's ironic because since it is easier to pick out the negatives, it's a lot more so in someone else than to reflect upon yourself and be like, would I do that much better? Probably not, but. I'm going to take my frustration out anyways and hold them to a higher standard than myself. And that's pretty hypocritical. And yeah. I just noticed that in the Christian community in general when it comes to media and sharing about God, where, you know, version and Bible apps like that are the exception as far as promoting it. They're promoting the opposite, but in spite of that, it's not as prevalent in the world with, like, Twitter and things like that, where there's just so many fake... Pharisees, pretty much, that have this whole, I'm mightier than thou, oh, you have this particular financial bracket, well, you're not as rich to join this church, so you're a lowlier sinner than me, and it's just like, you know, that shouldn't be a thing that defeats the whole purpose of Jesus, because he didn't care about money and status, he would much rather hang around what we would deem as low lives than a hypocritical prick that thinks he owns the whole world. So I just think it's funny how even in the one religion that promotes any class to come to him, that's one of the most influential ones as to be like, let's divide things up and make it that much harder to have people who don't know him to feel comfortable if you're outside of it. So I'm curious on, you know, especially with your Catholic schooling and things like that, if you noticed obvious strife 
in that way. It's really interesting, uh, kind of between like high school and high point too. Like, especially when someone start with high school, like I went to so I, I went to high school with a lot of like awesome, awesome people, which I'm very fortunate enough now to call like just like just brothers, like which is awesome to say. Like freshman year, uh, that would have been a crazy thought, but like being out of there, like I just had a reunion, like a like a, an alumni reception about a month, month and a half or so ago. Oh, nice. And I got to see, like, so many classmates that I haven't seen in five years. And it's we basically picked up, like, right where we left off. You know, it's not like, it didn't really feel like we had that much of a gap. One of the guys I went with were, like, really, really, like, their, like, their families were, like, really prominent, like, families in the area. Um, even a classmate of mine, like, his dad is uh, one of the broadcasters for the Red Sox, which I didn't find out until my senior year, which was, like, a huge deal because... Everybody in New England just always saw him on TV, mm-hmm. uh, right? And so, I think there was always that kind of rift, or maybe even call it maybe even a little bit of that divide, right? And then you know, going through the church motions, and and there's one, uh, I'll call it a retreat for lack of a better word for now, <laughs> uh, where we went down to Ecuador uh, for about a week. Um, okay, just go- so casually, yeah, we went to Ecuador. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So, sneaking in the back pocket, right? Um, and it was really good, I think, because we only brought maybe, I think there were like 10 of us uh, at most. And I, it was definitely eye opening for me because we went, um, so we went to the airport and then we went to basically some of the poorest communities in the world mm. where, you know, a lot of their houses were made out of basically trash or made in trash um because there's just the massive piles you know dumped right there <laughs> um and then you know it's a lot of folks who you know couldn't get the right you know medical treatments or the right medical like attention and the care and so you know there was one this one of those older gentlemen in a wheelchair who you know mentally you know it was probably around 70-ish or so and just like you know we knew like unfortunately didn't have a like a lot of time left just because you know just the way his body was just kind of the way he was acting and and i think it was just that moment where we all realized you know physical gains or whatever Mm -hmm. like we were able to just kind of flush those aside yeah that's awesome um i'd have to say for like closing remarks if you have any questions for me because i always like it to be more conversational and things and the freedom for you to ask anything we had the conversation about cliques and kind of groupies within essentially faith and religion and all that stuff especially within you know general conversations and churches and talks and all that stuff right and i loved our conversation about that right and so especially within the college setting especially with us being right around the college age right like, how, how have you seen that, right? And especially with your experiences. And I'd definitely love to get your viewpoint. The way I've seen it. And I like how specifically we are talking about college age because, you know, it's inevitable in high school, especially where it's a lot more stereotypically seen as, oh, you need to be in a clique. College, you kind of find your own. So it's more of a niche of what you're interested in rather than a clique of friends. And you kind of make friends through what you like. As far as the church, though, I'd say attendance record based and you're closer with those that are up there all the time, practically living at the church. (laughs) You know, I made a joke with my friend Stephanie, who wasn't like that, but could have been seen that way because she was a pastor's kid. She's like, yeah, I live in the basement, you know, (laughs) there's lighthearted jokes that can be made about it. But when it becomes stereotypically the reality of you putting other people down for not being at a physical location as often as someone else. It's more about the character of the person. The point is about Jesus' relationship and not how many times other people see you talk about him. So I'm really glad you asked me that question. And I hope that this was eye-opening for everyone listening. I am so grateful for you being here to make this even possible as far as sharing, liking, commenting, all of that, so more people can see this view of Christianity rather than the one that's being portrayed that's a stereotype and not all-encompassing. So tune in next time, and 
Thanks again for listening.